You dispatched President Kimball with real skill. Right under their noses, too. What a humiliation. My forces are in a position to assault the dam. Legatus Linnaeus has assumed command. Are you ready to go to him? To tell him to begin the assault? Good. In hoc signo Torus Vinces. Report to Legatus Lanius immediately. He'll brief you on the plan of battle. Come back victorious, or don't come back. The mark of Kaisar protects you. Stranger arrives, one who bears the mark. Finally, Mars has accepted my sacrifices and unleashes me. You are the courier Lord Kaisar has spoken of. The slaughter begins then. My army has been ready for some time now. My orders were to await the coming of a messenger. You are messenger, and message both, it would seem. Our forces are better equipped to take objectives than hold them. I do not wish to defend this place if another option exists. Our opponents follow a strict chain of command, which is both a strength and weakness. I intend to use you to strike at that weakness. Find the enemy commander, this General Oliver. Kill him or his resolve. Do this and his cowards will retreat, leaving the dam to us. Mars's eyes are upon you. Do not fail him or us.
We are here as promised. Now let's kick some ass. Now is not the time. Let's get going. We have a battle. Keep your head down. Could be snipers around. Good to see you, Amicus. The mark of Kaisar protects you. We each serve the Legion in our way. Good to see you, Amicus. Solway, Courier. How goes the battle in the East? Good news indeed. If only the same could be said for the West. The enemy is much more fortified ahead, and have snipers set up at key positions, which keep our men pinned down. In addition, they've managed to beat back our men emerging from the intake tower ahead and secure it. If we could just get rid of those damn snipers, or release our waiting men in the intake tower, we'd have the manpower to storm their positions. Then I wish you luck, and good hunting. With the outside secured, the poor fools inside have nowhere to run. Ah, the outsider who gained our master's favor. You prove yourself as cunning as the rumors report. My men await in the tunnel below. I'm to divide them between the dam top and the tunnels that lead to the western power plant. Your words have merit. Very well. I shall tell my men to concentrate their efforts here. More than a few if I have my way. Move it, you curs!
Just like old times. So you must be the courier the reports mentioned. Pass this message on to your commander. Hoover Dam will not fall while I still draw breath. This battle is far from over. Once the reinforcements from McCarran arrive, the counteroffensive will begin. If that's true, then there's nothing else for it. My men and I will hold out as long as we can. And go where? According to you, the road west is blocked. And while you might let us by, I highly doubt your allies will do the same. Perhaps I do have a secret tunnel out of here, but that doesn't change anything. My duty is to stay and fight.
My men and I are soldiers. We share an obligation to follow orders, and our orders are to hold this dam. You're... you're right. These men have placed their lives in my hands, and I won't throw them away for a lost cause. Don't expect to hold this place for very long, however. The NCR will be back. Hey! Whatever, I've got better things to do. Judging by the lack of blood, I take it the coward Oliver fled rather than face me. No matter. The rest of the dam is fully under our control. A few pitiful holdouts remain, but their time is short. The general was the last source of concern. With their commander gone, the NCR will pull out of this region, allowing our conquest to continue westward unopposed for a time. The Legion will swell with the number of slaves we will claim from this place, and the tribute we gather will fund further campaigns. Perhaps in time I will be granted the honor of conquering the land known as California, but for now we rest. Know that your efforts are appreciated and will not go unrewarded, but we can speak of that later. For now, come. We must see to the burning of the dead. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. Caesar entered the Strip as though it was his triumph. The Legion pushed the NCR out of New Vegas entirely, driving them back to the Mojave Outpost. The Legion occupied all major locations, enslaving much of the population and peacefully lording over the rest. Under the Legion's banner, civilization, unforgiving as it was, finally came to the Mojave Wasteland. The Legion marched over the Hoover Dam with the help of one who was as brutal and merciless as the worst of them, the Courier. Caesar honored her with a golden coin, minted in celebration of her contributions and distributed throughout the Wasteland. Tabitha and Rhonda went east, through Caesar's land, Occasionally, tales of their exploits found their way back west, though few believed them. Eventually, the stories concerning the duo were collected and published, and proved to be quite popular with children. Convinced that his time as a gunslinger was past, Raoul made peace with the idea of growing old. After traveling with the courier for a time, he retired and settled down in outer Vegas, where he would spend his days fixing ancient machinery. Cautious after the Boomers' display of power at Hoover Dam, Caesar chose to leave the Boomers alone. The Boomers remained isolated, but have been seen flying over the Mojave Desert from time to time. During the fight for Hoover Dam, the Brotherhood took Helios I, inflicting heavy damage on retreating NCR forces. But it was a Pyrrhic victory. Once the Strip was secured, Caesar's forces overwhelmed and eventually routed the Brotherhood from Helios I and Hidden Valley. The Fiends attacked Camp McCarran during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam and suffered heavy losses. Caesar, unimpressed with their performance and their dependence on chems, had them exterminated. After the Legion's victory, Caesar, out of a strange respect for his old fellows, allowed the followers safe passage out of the wasteland. Reluctantly, the followers accepted the offer and abandoned Old Mormon Fort to the Legion. The Legion, preoccupied with its acquisition of New Vegas, scarcely took notice of the town of Good Springs. Many locals moved on, fearful of Caesar's long shadow. Only the old and the stubborn remained. Despite the destruction of Cassidy Caravans, Cass lived for 30 more years. She made her way back west and passed away in a small shack outside of Vault City, the rose pendant still around her neck. As reward for their loyal service, Caesar forcibly integrated the Great Khans into the Legion. The sick and elderly were killed, the women sold as wives to ranking officers, and the tribe's identity was annihilated. Though many Great Khans mourned the death of their tribe, 
Many more were ultimately satisfied with their revenge against NCR. Thanks to the Courier and Lily, a cure for the Nightkin schizophrenia was found shortly after Dr. Henry's experiment concluded. Nightkin and other super mutants in the wasteland flocked to Jacobstown, and the town became known as a haven where a mutant could find peace. Lily continued to take her medicine at half doses, and although she remembered her grandchildren, her mind remained muddled and confused. Eventually, she parted ways with the courier and traveled west, seeking the remnants of her past. Impressed with the king's continued attacks upon NCR citizens and soldiers, the Legion offered them the option of being assimilated into the Legion. The kings refused and briefly became slaves in the Legion, but after a failed escape attempt, they were all put to death. With the transplant of Lupa's brain, Rex gained all of the donor's experiences traveling with the Legion. These melded well with his own memories of the Legion, and his new mind quickly adjusted to the myriad memories. Driven mad by Caesar's victory at Hoover Dam and unable to escape his memories, Boone staged a suicide mission against the Legate. Fighting as he wished he would have fought on the day of his wife's death, he brought down scores of legionaries before being caught. Before his crucifixion, he was brought before the Legate, who expressed his admiration for Boone's reckless abandon. Boone spat tobacco in his eye, for all of Caesar's armies to see. Most powder gangers at the correctional facility fled into the wasteland rather than face the advancing forces of the Legion. Those brave or foolish to remain were killed or crucified by the merciless legionaries. Armed with a wide array of improvised explosives and stolen weapons, the Vault 19 Powder Gang tormented the Mojave Wasteland for years. Citizens of the NCR were favorite targets, and they always suffered the worst fates. Not understanding the gravity of the Legion's imminent takeover, Prim, Sheriff Prim Slim valiantly attempts to resist Caesar's will. During the attack on Hoover Dam, Chief Hanlon and his rangers threw themselves into the path of the Legion assault, dying to the last man and woman. In the aftermath that followed in the NCR, bitter citizens and opportunistic senators were quick to denounce President Kimball and General Oliver. Hanlon and his fallen rangers were revered for their bravery and sacrifice. Merciless in their assault on the NCR, the remnants struck fear into the hearts of even the Centurions at Hoover Dam. Well aware of the full extent of their power, Kaisar commanded his troops to not pursue them. And so the Courier's Road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes.